We are so pleased to have on set today Peter Foreman, who is currently the president of the South Shore Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, yes. Previously, uh, you were the Plymouth County Sheriff from 1995 to 2000 and a Plymouth State Representative from 81 to 94. So you have been involved in this area for a long, long time. Lifelong resident. Lifelong resident. Okay. Today we're going to talk about housing. And the whole reason we're having you on to talk about this, it, it stems from a, what did you talk about, South Shore 2030 housing report and what it, what it is and what it meant? So a few years ago, the Chamber of Commerce decided to take a look at our entire region and what our economic opportunities were. And one of the interesting things that came out of that report was that we actually have some economic weaknesses in this area. Mm -hmm. If we're going to compete with other metropolitan Boston areas or other parts of the country, we have to uh, look at some issues that we have uh, for economic growth on the South Shore. One of those turned out to be that we are aging as a region at a higher and faster rate than other metropolitan Boston areas. Okay. And if we are going to kind of reseed the economy of the area and grow the economy, so people who are working age have good job opportunities down here instead yep. of three, four hour commutes to oh, Boston. Yep. <laughs> uh, one of the things we had to look at is how do we attract younger people and then how do we keep downsizing baby boomers who are still economically productive, yep. working, creating jobs. That came down to an issue of housing. Right. Uh, and that sort of goes full circle to the previous life I had in the legislature where Plymouth was booming yes. because of the urban exodus from the 60s, 70s, yep. 80s. And there was a lot of concern about growth in the suburbs yep. and what that meant for services. And what most of the suburbs ended up doing was creating very restrictive growth standards to try to limit young families from coming into towns. So so let's talk about that, because that, that really surprised me when you said that to me before we were on air. So c communities look at young people moving into town not as a positive, economically speaking, but as a negative, because they're going to produce families who down the road are going to add to our uh, the school systems and, and the school districts and, uh, and all the pressures to expand the school districts. Is that there, there correct? Is, there is a bias when you are looking at housing at more than an acre zoning. Okay. If, you, if you're looking at multifamily housing, mm -hmm. looking for, at apartments, you're looking at smaller units, mm -hmm. more compact space. There is a knee-jerk reaction from many people in those communities that that's too many new people coming in. They might have kids. That's going to affect <laughs> services. Yep. That's going to affect my taxes. Yep. And that creates a lot of opposition to any type of housing that will, in fact, work to attract those young people. And those young people and those downsizing baby boomers yeah. are two key populations we have to compete for with other areas if we're going to attract businesses and grow our economy. Right. And the irony is most, uh, many people in communities think they're going to preserve their town by keeping young families or young people out. In reality, if we don't start attracting younger people right. to our area, uh, what we'll see is a decline in property values, local budgets, and town services, right. and that starts a downward cycle. Plus, businesses in the area can't expand if there's no workforce the, from which to draw. The key to attracting more businesses to this area so people have choices beyond driving to Boston right. Right. is having a workforce. Mm -hmm. And your workforce is, a lot of it will be younger professionals. Sure who are interested in living in nice communities with lots of services. Yep. So what we did out of this South Shore 2030 plan is come up with a housing agenda that the chamber is promoting mm -hmm. uh, to try to encourage more housing that reflects the interest of those two population groups, yep. young professionals in their 20s, early 30s, yep. 
and those downsizing baby boomers right. like us who, like who want right. to get rid of uh, get know, rid of the big house four and move to a yep, move to a nice acreage. condo or a small house right near services so exactly uh, so our housing strategy is out there to promote housing as an economic development tool okay in order to help attract more businesses to this entire region so how do you convince the powers that be whether it's the zoning or the select people or the town managers that this is a great idea how do you convince them that this is something they need to put on the front burner so a lot of it is advocacy a lot of it is simply telling the other side of the story mm -hmm. for too long this the story that was being told was any new housing is a net drain on services mm -hmm. unless it's age restricted over 55 right. housing suburbs have been very welcome uh, and open to that right but we need to see more housing. The housing we build, primarily in the suburbs, responds to anti-growth zoning. Mm. It does not respond to the housing market and what those key demographic groups Are. need and right. want right. Uh, for housing. Right. And so if we're going to compete economically, we have got to build more housing that responds to the market right. rather than anti-growth zoning. Sure. Now, so is it the zoning of each town that has to change? Like, I, I know I live in Pembroke, and it used to be that new houses had to be built on almost an acre. Yeah. It, was, it was a huge amount of land just for a single house. Do we have to change the, the philosophy of zoning or the zoning I, I think bylaws? To, I think you have to change attitudes. Yeah. I think you have to, I think towns, and some towns do a good job. Yeah. And a lot of town officials understand this equation but they run into that local opposition sure. from their residents. So in some cases, it might be changing zoning. In other cases, it might be being more open mm. to where you put multifamily housing. It might be more open to how you zone. Okay. For example, um, there is a major issue around the country with retail space. Yeah. Malls, mm -hmm. shopping centers mm -hmm. are all facing a lot of pressure sure. because of retail yep. change. In other parts of the country, the way you support those retail districts is introduce more people yeah. into those Spaces. areas. Yeah. And typical zoning is your, your retail is one place, your yes. commercial is another, another place, your industrial yeah. is one, and you your can, residential. You can combine them. You can mix them up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And that takes a change in attitude. One of them may be just changing the procedures at town meeting. The governor has a bill to allow for changes in zoning mm -hmm. to be adopted by town meetings by majority vote instead of two-thirds. Oh, okay. Uh, so when you're looking to get some permits, uh, when you're looking to do specific projects mm -hmm. that meet the kind of housing products uh, that we want to see and the housing projects we're supporting, mm -hmm. uh, the majority at town meeting will be able to rule not a minority uh, right. when you require two-thirds right. votes. Okay. Unfortunately, we are, we are out of time. Um, how, where can people go to get more information about this? So our whole economic plan, including the housing, can be seen at um, southshore2030.com. Okay, southshore2030.com. And it'll yes. kind of explain the whole housing. Um, it, it will have the housing yep. report and our larger uh, regional economic plan. Okay, so can we ask you to come back later? Absolutely. Um, and we'll do an update on this? Absolutely. Um, it's this an is easy a, drive. It's a fascinating um, fascinating subject and one that's not to go away very soon. Nope. We have to deal with it and address nope. it. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Very much.